Welcome back to MTD CNC North America. I'm in Michigan today at IQ Manufacturing with my buddy Chris. What's really cool about this company is it's quite young. We're talking six or seven years, massive growth from a barn into a 30,000 square foot building that we're standing in right now. This is a fourth generation shop rat, as he calls himself. <laughs> but I'm really excited to share more about this company with you because they can make anything that you want to make. So when it comes to partnering with someone like IQ Manufacturing and Chris, you have everything you need, which is fantastic. So Chris, let's talk more about the growth, the company, what your potentials are. Let's share with the audience everything that you've created. Yeah, so in the seven years we've been in business, we've had 100% growth five out of the seven years. One of those years that we didn't was COVID. The other year was when we moved into this building. That was obviously a huge capital investment for our company and it took a lot of time to get everything set up and the infrastructure put in the building to even be productive. But we've had a lot of growth, we continue to grow. Um, we're making a lot of investments to be a much larger company, to be three, four, five X bigger than what we are. We're not planning on being a, a 25 person company. That's not something we wanna you know, stay at that level. We, we wanna be a 300 person company. We wanna be a you know, 50, 60 million dollar company. We, that's always been our goal all along. Well, Chris, you're making all the right moves. When I look around, you're investing in, you know, five axis machines. You're investing in uh, pallet change machines. You have your EDMs here. I mean, the growth and potential of what you're doing is incredible. And knowing that you guys have the skills to make anything from parts for Tesla to a small job shop type stuff, the ability to work with you makes it super easy as well, knowing the precision and the flexibility you have here. Yeah, we try to be nimble for a lot of different customers. We have 135 different customers in you know, six or eight different industries from automation, uh, the studio work on the car model side, tool and die, molds, uh, just small components like you said, and then some high volume production for some automotive players. Our philosophy is if we shop at a bunch of different stores, you know, we'll find work from somebody at some time. And the real important part in manufacturing is to stay busy. You know, it's feast or famine in manufacturing, so our strategic long vision is make sure we can always feed the beast here to cover our, our costs, to cover our expenses, to keep our guys employed so we can attract good talent, buy good equipment, and we believe that's a good long-term formula. Absolutely agree. And speaking of some of the people that are here, they're quite young on average, right? You have a couple of older generation guys, but you the longevity of what you're creating with the young folks here, educating them on the processes of what you want to make here, you are investing in the future of your company, of yourself, of everything that you're going to make as well. Yeah, that's that's a that's a uh, interesting thing because we're so like tech based right out of the gate. It kind of pre sorts some of the older guys that are more manual machinists that aren't really tech savvy. They're just they're just not a good fit here. And if you're not young in mind and you're looking to learn new things, this isn't the place to work at. Our, you know, the young guys, they all know everything there is on a computer. That's the easy part. Teaching them how to machine properly is the hard part. So in this labor market where it's tight and stuff, we, t we actually search for guys that are gamers. Like we love gamers. You can take gamers, they have to do creative problem solving and stuff. Those guys are usually pretty easy to teach because th they'll, they'll spend three, four weeks on how to figuring out how to beat a game. Well, in that time, I can teach them how to run most of these machines. So gamers actually are a big like thing. And I know I'm giving a little bit of a trade secret away, but there's plenty of gamers out there for everybody. I like that a lot. You're yeah. so right. But let's talk a little bit more about you, if you don't mind, Chris. We're talking fourth generation machine rat, as you called yourself, yeah. right? Let's learn more about you. Yeah, so my great grandfathers on both sides of my family were, they immigrated from Europe. One was a welder, one was a machinist, one was from Poland and Germany. My grandfather owned a small stamping plant in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. He did uh, small stamping components for the automotive industry. My father's tool and die stamping uh, guy as well. And then I got an apprenticeship right out of high school for um, mold making. And, uh, you know, I spent all of my high school classes in shop stuff. My business partner likes to laugh. Out of my eight credit hours, I had one that wasn't in shop. You know, I had Michigan history. And then I had, like, you know, machine three, you know, drafting, welding was my whole day. So when I got out of high school, I was prepped to make money right away. And I got in a really good shop. I learned a lot right away. And I was able to parlay that into starting my own business. So now that everyone's fallen in love with who you are and what you do, let's talk about more about what you do. When I'm looking at, see Mitsubishi machines, I see Haas, I see OKK, I see Herco, the potential of what you can create. Let's talk to the audience watching right now. When we're talking about the viewers, not just domestically, but around the world, and you go, hey, 
take a look at IQ Manufacturing and what we can do here. What kind of a message would you share with the global audience saying, take a look at us, we can make your products? Yeah, so like I said, we machine anything from foam, wrens, to titanium and stainlesses. We do a bunch of both of those things, and they couldn't be like farther on the, you know, the machining spectrum from each other. Uh, we use a lot of different brands of tooling so we can make sure we can have the right tool for the right job and be at the right price point. You know, some of our smaller machines, some of the guys might look down on the high volume production or the fancy five, five axis world, but believe it or not, some of our best ROI is on our small Hercos, just doing that small detail work. But it's the right tool, right job. That's not the fanciest machine. We're not cutting, you know, fancy aerospace parts on it, but we're cutting work on it and we're making a profit and we can provide a good service quickly for our customer at a good price point. Those are very important aspects to consider. When yeah. we're talking about having a good price point, having good lead times where you can ship it quickly. And of course we all have to have quality products, right? Because if we receive something that's not a good finish or not a good measurement of whatever it might be that the specs say that they're supposed to be, we have to ship it back. So knowing that you are all inclusive with all of these components and the growth potential as I'm looking around this 30,000 square foot building, amazing. So I wish you that success. I wish you that growth. And for the audience watching, take a look at IQ. Really a great company. Chris is an amazing person. Where do you see yourself moving into the future? You have so much potential here, Chris. What, what, I know we've talked about this a little bit. Where do you see yourself in the next five, 10 years? Well, we definitely want to uh, grow beyond this building alone. We're not, again, I don't want to just be a small mom and pop business. That's not our goal. Um, but to do that, in the tight labor market, we're gonna to have to increase our investments in automation and better technology and software and then continue to advance like a modern company. I feel most machine shops operate like it's 1978 still, and it's not. Well, a lot of the people that are watching right now in the automation world are gonna be knocking on your door to help you implement that, I am sure, because yeah. we get a lot of viewers and we know that everyone's moving toward automation. So, Chris, I know you are incredibly busy and I do appreciate your time. But before we let the audience go, before we let you go, where can we find out more about you? What's your website, your socials, your home address, your social security number, all the things that you want to give away to the audience right now? Uh, our, our website's iqmanufacturing.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, just Chris Branicky. Uh, also, our social media manager, Haley, she does a lot of stuff on there, so you can reach out to Haley if you want to, to reach out to our company. Absolutely perfect. And Haley, you guys probably already know as Hat Girl, uh, an amazing person, a great spirit. Reach out to her, reach out to Chris. IQ Manufacturing here in Michigan, the heart of manufacturing here in the Midwest. Chris, you are amazing. On behalf of MTD, we wish you much success moving forward. And if there's anything we can do to support you to the growth of U.S. manufacturing, we are happy to help. Appreciate it.